If you want to get a good quality budget digital piano according to your needs, then watch the video till the end and then decide to buy. Pianos are intricate machines. Think about it. Their many precise, moving parts work together to form the instrument we all know and love. Learning to play the piano is something I recommend to anyone. But the price barrier to begin might seem a little high. It's been nearly two decades since prototype digital pianos hit the market. And that means we're working with mature technology. Regardless of your budget, there's probably a good keyboard that suits your needs. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Casio Casiano CTS-300. The Casiano CTS-300 is our personal favorite choice as a budget keyboard. At this price point, sounds and keys are as far from the real deal as you can get, so it was hard to choose a winner here. The CTS-300 is a new offering from Casio and a part of the reboot of their classic Casio Tom keyboards. Casio also entered our sub-$300 list with their cheap CTX series keyboards, and a similar sound chip is included in the CTS-300. While I wouldn't call the included 400 sounds particularly good, they are good enough for practice purposes. There are even basic rhythms and stripped-down accompaniment features too to spice things out. While there are cheaper keyboards in the Casio Home line, the CTS-3000 is the cheapest option that includes velocity-sensitive keys, which makes it the right choice. As we've mentioned before, playability is the most important aspect at this price point, and having reactive keys that respond to your playing intensity is a must to build up dynamic control skills. The keys themselves are very basic synth-style keys, which is sadly the norm at this price range. These won't get you too far in terms of piano focus proficiency, but they are good enough to build up fundamental muscle memory. For what it's worth, the keys don't feel as cheap as many other entry-level keyboards mostly due to the textured key tops and block and piano style keys. The main downgrades compared to the CTX line are that you lose out on the more advanced accompaniment features. You don't have different variations, and advanced bass following is absent as well. Moving on to the next at number 2 with Yamaha PSR F173. We included the Yamaha PSR F173 in our roundup, and while it does sound better, I still consider the Casio a superior choice for beginners. I'll give the PSR F173 this though. It has a built-in MIDI recorder, and a bit more in terms of arrangement features. However, these aren't necessary for beginners and might end up becoming distractions that hamper your learning. If you do want to go that route, Consider paying a bit more for the PSR F363 or the PSR EW300, which are both better built and well worth the extra price, not to mention the addition of touch-sensitive keys. When working with a severely limited budget, we did come up with some inventive options. Regardless, the CTS300 is arguably the best choice. The star of the newly rebooted Casio Home line is a basic but complete package, and it includes all the necessary features to be considered a proficient practice keyboard. While there are undoubtedly better keyboards out there, this is hands down one of the best options at this low price bracket. The downside to budget keyboards are sacrifices made in name of playability. Realistic feeling keys are generally absent, as weighted hammer actions cost a lot to implement. The PSR F373 comes with 61 unweighted keys, but a 73 key version exists in the form of the PSR EW310. The keys aren't too impressive, but they are among the better synth style keys I've tested. Regardless of the lack of realism, the PSR F373's and weighted keys are still good for practice purposes. Thanks to well-tuned velocity curves, pianists of every skill level can exercise dynamic control. The stereo speakers are also solid despite the low 2.5W wattage. The number 3 position is held by Roland FP10. Now that the Casio PX160 is discontinued, the Roland FP10 is a pretty easy pick for us in this category. While it comes really close to exceeding the $500 price point, it justifies the cost with its excellent key action and great sounds. Even when the PX160 was still round, the FP10 was very close to taking over the top spot of our list. However, the PX160 didn't have an edge over its competitors by providing a more complete feature set that wasn't available in this price range before. Today, most beginner digital pianos are pretty basic and comparable when it comes to features, so the two main factors that we should take into consideration is sound and feel and this is where the Roland FP10 excels. The FP10 is the only sub-$500 digital piano that features triple sensor hammer action keys. Roland's will receive PHA4 standard to be precise, which is the same key action used in Roland's more expensive models, including the FP30X and FP60X. Triple sensors allow more accurate detection of your key presses, performing especially well on pieces with quick note repetitions. Escapement gives the keyboard an extra level of authenticity by simulating the slight notch felt when you press the keys about halfway down. The white keys are also covered with a textured material that simulates ivory and helps absorb excessive moisture from your fingers. Excellent feeling keys aside, 
The FP-10 features Roland's famous supernatural sound engine. Roland takes great pride in this technology, as back in the day when it was first introduced, it was pretty much unheard of to use modeling technologies along with high-quality samples to achieve an authentic piano playing experience. Not only does the FP-10 have a very rich, dynamic piano sound, it's also the only instrument in this price range that simulates solo acoustic elements such as string resonance, damper resonance, and key off resonance. It's not just piano sounds either. There are 15 built-in sounds including electric pianos, organs, strings, and of course jazz scat, my personal favorite. Next at number 4 we have Roland FP30X. Yes, it's Roland's FP series again. This time it's FP10's big brother, the Roland FP30X. It's one of the best-selling intermediate digital pianos and my personal favorite in this price range. We've already covered the FP10 in our sub-$500 section and this is the original, non-stripped-down version of it. The PHA4 standard key action is great and the expanded sound palette, when compared to the FP10, makes the FP30X a terrific digital piano. As mentioned earlier, Roland's supernatural sound engine is used for most of their instruments, from keyboards to electronic drums. It merges audio samples with software modeling for malleable sound palette. The main piano sound is also solid and recreates the feel of an acoustic piano really well for the price. All prior recommendations up to this point felt a bit off, mainly due to less detailed sounds, but Roland pulls this off really well. Aside from the acoustic pianos, there are a variety of other instrument sounds available on board including some solid electric piano sounds, organs, strings, etc. Sounds aren't the only way that the FP30X excels. I rank the FP30X as keyboard above other key actions in the price bracket due to a realistic weight and feel. The PHA4 standard key action uses individually weighted hammers coupled with triple sensors, which increases the precision and accuracy of keeper's detection. The number 5 position is held by Casio PX1000. The keys feel great and the included sounds are also well done. The main reason we chose the FP30X as top in this category is the PX1000's keys. They are very playable, but not as realistic as the PHA4's action, lacking some heft and mechanical feedback. The compact chassis doesn't come without sacrifices. The FP30X's bestseller status is well deserved. It's been over 4 years since the release of its predecessor and we can still heartily recommend it as one of the best portable digital pianos available. The new FP30X improves on most of the shortcomings of its predecessor and deserves to continue its legacy as one of the best portable digital pianos under $1,000 on the market. The number 6 position is dominated by Kawaii ES920. This was, yet again, another hard category to picking a winner. Most pianos in this range are close in terms of sound and build quality, so it's hard to pick a straightforward winner. Our final choice was a toss-up between the Kawaii ES920 and Roland FP90X, but we ended up choosing the Kawaii. If we're going for the best overall piano playing experience, the Kawaii ES920 is a safe bet. Kawaii is known for their acoustic pianos and many will argue that their reaction is one of the best plastic foldy type key actions out there. Sounds are also well made on the ES920. Pierce sampling is used, but there's a clearly observable improvement over previous categories. Kawaii's harmonic imaging Excel technology is put to good use here. You may write off the reaction because it's plastic, but that's a rookie mistake. Playing the keys will easily show why people love them. Kawaii has been in the piano business for a long time, since the early 1900s, and their experience in making pianos pays off. These keys feel great and are definitely at the top of their class. 38 tones might seem fairly small, but you know what they say, quality over quantity is always best. Moving on to the next at number 7 with Casio PX870. The Casio PX870 was an easy top pick. As the flagship instrument in the Privia line, it's easily one of the best value propositions you'll find. Casio's tri-sensor scaled hammer acting keyboard Roman 2 is used here and feels great to the touch, even simulating the feel of textured ebony and ivory key tops. While the keys tend to be noisier than other key actions, the feel more than makes up for this downside. The internal mechanisms are responsive, and that's really all that matters. The sounds are arguably the best of the bunch as well, with Casio's AIR sound engine delivering great sounds that use the dual 20W speakers to their maximum advantage. Casio is a prolific digital piano manufacturer, but for the longest time I never enjoyed playing their keyboards. Their sound was a major sticking point for me, as I always felt their samples were second-rate compared to other manufacturers. That has changed in recent years and the PX870 sounds excellent. The keys feel great and the key noise is barely an issue when you've got the speakers turned on. One of the main advantages of Casio's AIR sound engine here is dub multi-dimensional morphing, which uses modifiable parameters like resonance and hammer response to simulate real piano sounds. We hope we've helped your pursuit of the ideal digital piano for your needs and interests. The market is really overcrowded these days, 
so it can be hard to identify the best options. I'd suggest diving deeper into the categories by entering our full best list for more information. There's only so much we can do in these aggregate lists, and you know what they say. A ton of detail can get lost in the summaries. That's all for today. We upload music product review videos in every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for the upcoming video notification.